All right, I'm ready. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to thank you all for coming, and uh, we're glad you could join us for this uh, very happy occasion. Um, I'm not going to speak. Uh, those of you who, who live here were so good to hear me yesterday, and that's punishment enough. Um, but we do have uh, many speakers, most of whom have not yet arrived, uh, following uh, the um, the traits that I learned from our friend Dr. David Lukens. Uh, you see me walking around with the one bottle of booze, distributing it rather than an open bar. As a youth worker, I'm very sensitive to uh, having an open bar in a room full of 13-year-olds. So, uh, so our practice, as, as Dr. Lukens taught me, is uh, less bar, more mitzvah. So, so uh, hopefully, uh, many more of our uh, fine speakers will uh, will be showing up and sharing Divrei Torah uh, for us to uh, to enjoy. Uh, but in the meantime, I would like to turn the mic over to the uh, man of the hour, Benjamin Abraham, who has uh, worked uh, many long hours uh, preparing for this big moment, and he's shrugging like, who, me? <laughs> so, and uh, after which, uh, hopefully, you'll uh, join us in some festive dancing. So please, uh, Benjamin Abraham. In celebration of my bar mitzvah, I would like to share a thought from Rav Moshe Feinstein Zetzal. Rav Moshe was, my, was the Rebbe of my father's Rebbe, which I guess makes, make, makes him my great grand Rebbe. <laughs> In the very first pasuk of Parsha Vayera, Parsha Vayera, the Torah says, Vayidaber el Kema Moshe, Vayimer el Avani Hashem. The term Vayidaber means Hashem spoke harshly. Rashi tells us this, that this is because Moshe was close back to Hashem, asking why Hashem was mistreating B'nai Yisrael. So why does the Torah immediately change to, soft, to the soft tone of Omer? This is to teach us an important lesson. When someone has to correct another person's behavior, they have to do, it, do, have to do it so strongly, but they also have to do it so nicely that the other, so that the other person will listen and change their ways. Another explanation is that when Moshe criticized Hashem, he wasn't doing it as doing it for his own sake, to be a big child of Hashem, he was doing it because he was concerned about B'nai Yisrael. What Moshe did not take into account is that nobody is more concerned with the future of B'nai Yisrael than a Karsh Baruch when all his actions are directed toward our Yeshua. Therefore, Hashem spoke harshly to Moshe for accusing him of not being concerned with B'nai Yisrael, but also gently because Hashem knew that Moshe did so out of his own concern for the Indian tribe. This approach also explains an unusual Rashi on the next puzzle. The Torah continues, I appear to Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Rashi explains, El Ha'avos, to the Elos. Don't, worry, don't we already know that Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov are the Elos? What is Rashi coming to teach us? The answer again is that Moshe spoke out of concern for Clyde's so. Hashem is telling Moshe, when I appeared to Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, I didn't only give them promises for themselves. I also gave them promises for their descendants of the world as the Elos. They didn't question my word, neither should you, Moshe. Listen here is important. David and Amalek tells him to heal him. Atzaz Hashem Olam Talmud. Hashem's plans last forever. Or as my mother likes to put it, a mensch tracht tracht un gab A person plans and Hashem laughs. Or as my father admits to himself as a writer would put it, the best plans of mice and men of gang of lay. It's all well and good concern for our friends, for Clyde's role, and for the world. But Hashem has given us the has given us the instruction manual for how we should behave. If we don't see how Torah, the Torah way to address our problems, that doesn't mean it's wrong, Klaus Hashem. It just means that we have to have a moon and keep working until we understand it. We have to follow the examples of our Rebbe who bring us up to follow the words of Hashem through our Hidosha. I want to thank my grandparents for their constant support. I want to thank my brother and sister for always challenging me, although it's not always in the way I would like. I have to thank, my, I have to thank Rabbi Arnaf for helping me prepare my lady. I have to thank my Rebbein for teaching me Torah. I have to thank my parents for bringing me up with the of and care of priorities for having me to Yishuv Torah. And I want to thank all of you for being here to celebrate with me today.